What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC. I'm Ken, and today we're looking at a new FuraTech combo that is awesome for anybody trying to run the FCX24 platform brushless. Let's check it out. All right, guys, before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell on the videos you like, and uh, we really appreciate it. Just a click for you, but it means the world to me. And uh, yeah, we've got a contest going on. Search the channel for that contest, and hopefully when you're watching this, it's still going on. It's like a three-month-long thing, so you probably have some time. All right, let's get into this new Furitech Micro Komodo and Lizard Pro setup that's literally just a drop-in and you can still use your stock remote. Exciting. So here's the setup that you uh, you get in the combo. You get your Lizard Pro. You get your Micro Komodo with the correct pinion and uh, mounting bracket or motor plate, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. And then you get a receiver. Okay, guys, this is the key because what this does is it lets you use your stock remote, okay? So one of the things about switching to a brushless system is you have to change out your receiver on all these two-in-ones on the FMSs. There are some other platforms where some of their ESC combos have a channel two, and then you can plug your um, brushless ESC straight into that channel two, and you're good to go. But most two-in-one combos do not have a channel two, which is your throttle, to that'll allow you to hook in uh, external ESC. So whenever you go brushless, pretty much on any truck, you have to change out your remote and the receiver. Okay, you got to change out both, which is kind of a pain. And for some people that are newer and maybe they don't have a higher end receiver that can do multiple models or uh, they just are intimidated by changing out to a new receiver or they don't have the money and they want to go brushless, but they don't want to have to buy a new transmitter and receiver. And maybe they even like it. There's a lot of reasons why uh, you would want to keep the stock remote, right? I love these little guys. They're easy to throw in a backpack. Um, they're easy to one-hand drive with. I don't know. I, I just have a bunch of them. A bunch of different trucks use this style of remote and other similar styles. And I like having them. Also, I like to be able to hand my trucks over to somebody and say, hey, give this a run. I'll run this other truck. And if I have all my trucks on one remote, and we do have, you know, we have a Noble Pro and a regular Noble and stuff like that. But you know, having a bunch of trucks on a single remote means that I can't share those trucks with other people because if it's on a truck that I want to drive or say I've got a group of people, my family goes out with me, the kids want to run it, the wife wants to run it, and I've got a bunch of trucks and they're all on the same remote, bad times. So I like to try to keep stuff on the stock remotes as much as I can, um, unless it's something I'm super serious, like a comp truck or a comp, you know, a competitive race car, something along those lines. I'll run them on my good uh, electronics, but the stock remotes usually are plenty fine. And like I said, they're, they're compact, they're small, they're easy to run with. And um, being able to run a brushless system without changing out your remote and your receiver, huge, 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 huge. So what this does is it replaces your two-in-one with your new Lizard Pro for the brushless and this new receiver, which is a pretty simple little swap over. And we're gonna go ahead and show you that here in a minute. But another thing that's super cool about this FureTech receiver here not only does it work on the older V1s for like the original Butchers, the original Max Smashers, but it'll also work with the newer version remote that doesn't have the dip switches that comes with the K5 and some of the newer trucks. Uh, if you have newer production versions, it'll work with both, which is nuts, guys. That is freaking awesome. And guess what? These are all remotes for different FMS, Rock Hobby, and even Hobby Plus, this is for the uh, the Harvest. This guy here is for the uh, Rock Van. Um, this guy is for the 6x6 uh, Cheyenne or Apache. It was the, the Apache from FMS or Rock Hobby. All of these remotes will all bind to this, which is crazy because they won't bind to the these FMS FCX trucks, but they'll bind to that, which is amazing. So... This system will even drop into your Hobby Plus stuff as far as the receiver and the uh, ESC here. 
The only problem that you might have is the motor here and getting a mounting plate and the pinion. Uh, but maybe Furitech will be coming up with other motor options for the Hobby Plus stuff. Uh, not motor options, but mounting plate and uh, pinion options. That would be awesome. Because again, all of them work. If it's got this style of remote, it works, which is freaking sweet. And I don't even know if Furetech meant to do that or knew that that's what this receiver they were getting uh, does, because this is made by Flysky or somebody like that clones Flysky receivers, essentially. Um, pretty sure it's actually Flysky. Hold on, I'm going to open this up. Gonna pop this guy off here. Oh, there we go. Oh, sure enough, that's a Fly Sky receiver. At least it says it is. And it looks to be conformal coated, so probably waterproof, which is awesome. We're gonna go ahead and install this setup in the butcher, I believe, for now. We could put it in any of them, but I think we wanna put it in the butcher. We'll probably end up getting another one or two for some of the other trucks. Um, this guy is pretty much completely stock other than wheels and tires, and I don't know, let's just go old school. We'll go with the original Butcher here. But again, it'll work in any of them. And you know what actually would be sick is the new Cedar motor with this receiver and uh, the Lizard Pro. That would be amazing. Or even like one of the newer Pythons or Python Pro. Python Pro with this receiver on there. Oh, just drops right in. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy open. I'm going to show you. So again, the setup comes with the motor, the ESC, the receiver. Also, it comes with a battery plug that matches your FCX24 battery, which is awesome. And then because the FCX uses the smaller JST style servo plugs, it comes with two adapters that will go to the regular servo plug. So that's awesome. Also, I think the newer ones may come with a third adapter plug for the lights as well. So you'll get three of those plugs instead of just the two. That's the hope anyway. This setup is super clean, super easy to drop in, so I'm excited. Let's just get to it. So the first thing we gotta do is just pop this guy off. So he's just held down with double-sided sticky tape. You can use a flat-headed screwdriver, kind of wedge it in there, pop it off, and you're good to go. We've got our shift servo and our motor wire. The motor wire doesn't matter, it's coming out. Here's our front servo. Simple as that. This whole unit though, we can put it away, put it in another truck, whatever. The next move is to go ahead and unbolt the motor and transmission. So we're going to do that real quick. It's just these four bolts here on the bottom. Remember, the shorty goes here, which is basically where the shift mechanism is. So when you pop this guy off, just be very careful. You've got your shift lever here, and you're going to want to work it out so that the shift lever you can see it right here is able to just kind of come right out okay super super simple don't lose your little shift bar and we'll set this guy aside now we just go ahead and get into the motor plate here i'm gonna pop off the cover Super easy there. And then we have two screws right here. And now your motor is loose. If you have an older version of an FCX24, you're gonna have a problem with this motor mounting spot because the pinion is pressed onto the motor shaft after it's put into the motor mount, which means you can't pull the pinion out. Now. You're going to have to trim this out regardless if you have this older version because you can't get the new motor in without, you know, having the hole there. So we're just going to go ahead and take an X-Acto and we're just going to score around this pinion. Just score around it over and over until we can get it out. So we're just going to slowly cut away at it and eventually we'll be able to pop it out. patient work it out kind of cut around it I, I was just kind of poking little slots around it make sure it's enough to get the pinion to fit through and then you can kind of work it eventually to where it'll come out you just got to make sure there's room in there let's see here there we go get 
I might even be able to use some pliers and just kind of I just don't want to damage the, the transmission housing. There we go. This right here. So you can see it's a little chewed up, but it had, again, we had to make space for the pinion to come out. And now we're going to go ahead and clean it up so that we can put the new one in there. Again, you're not going to have to do any of this at all. Uh, if you've got a newer version FCX, the older ones, unfortunately, that's how they did it. So we'll just clean this guy up a little bit here. Just make sure you don't mess with your holes. And you should be good. Ta da! Okay, perfect, guys. Really not that hard. Um, and again, the newer ones, the slot is already there. You just may have to align the pinion teeth so that it'll pull out nicely because it is a very tight fit. So you do have to align the pinion teeth to pull it through the slot on the uh, new version, but you don't have to do any cutting, so that's nice. All right, so this new motor mount, it mounts straight in, no issues. And you don't have to worry about your mesh. It's just set already, basically from the factory. Those motor mount holes are exactly where you want it to be. We can throw our screws back in there. If you are worried about the mesh at all, you can try to adjust it. Again, those holes are pretty much exactly where they need to be but there might be just enough play in there to get it just a little tighter if you want it or just a little looser if you wanted just hold it the direction you want to go as you tighten it and should be able to uh, get a little bit of adjustment out of it not a lot in worst case if you really wanted to adjust the mesh you could slot it just a little bit not much just a little um, but yeah should be good and don't forget this is going to be a little loose because you don't have the other side on the other side, once you put that on there, it's gonna be nice and tight, and then you can feel it. Seems good. Pretty slick. Alrighty, let's get this back together. Goes together the same way it came apart. And now we just put the uh, butte back into the beast. So this guy here, the first thing you're gonna do is the shift servo again. So I like to just kind of hold it from underneath. Get ourselves aligned here. Let's see if I can drive shafts kind of in the way. Just, if you have any issues, make sure you just push it through so that it's all the way the direction you're trying to connect it in. There we go. And hopefully we can just kind of ring it around. There we go. And Oh, we gotta get our drive shaft in there. Dang it, our drive shaft is long. It may be easier to remove the drive shaft if you need to. There we go. Super simple. And you can see down in there, hopefully, our little linkage is connected. Right there. And then we'll go ahead and try to work our drive shafts in. Make sure you try to phase your drive shaft. If you don't know what phasing the drive shaft is, it's where you align the ears so that they're the same on both sides here. All right, so you can see here our ear there, and then the ears are on the sides here on that center shaft. That is out of phase, so you need to back it off and turn them until they are facing the same direction. So now you can see the ear is up here. And then hopefully your ear will be up on this side of the drive shaft, right? And then you can marry them then. So now you can see it's in line. Okay, that prevents vibration and whatnot. Uh, on higher speed trucks or high spinning drive shafts, high speed spinning drive shafts, 
they will vibrate if they're not in phase. Actually, I think I'm going to pull the rear off here and just do it that way. I'm going to go ahead and mount this. And then we'll do the rear. And remember, don't over tighten them. You are going into a plastic transmission housing. And this little guy, it goes where the shift is, right? The shift bar, that's where the small screw goes. So just remember that. And again, do not over tighten. There's no reason to over tighten on these guys. Just till they're snug. And in our drive shaft here, I can show you what phasing is a little more clearly. You can see how the shaft lines up here to here versus if it were turned, right? Now it's not lined up, okay? Another way to check that is the screw holes. The screw holes will almost always align, so make sure they're facing the same direction here and here, and then you'll be in alignment as well. All right, let's get this guy back on here and then get to the electronics. Now, I think your biggest challenge on this guy is gonna be figuring out where you wanna mount your electronics, especially if you're trying to keep your stock battery position. Here's our stock battery, throw it in here. You can try to set stuff up on its side like so, but I think you're probably gonna end up hitting on the hood. So that could be a problem, but let's try real quick, we'll see. Yeah, definitely can't go that tall there. I'm pretty sure that the height of the stock ESC is about the max that you're able to go there. Maybe the height of your battery is really the max. So battery, let's see. Yeah, the battery is actually not under the hood. It's right at the windshield. So yeah, that under the hood part is pretty slim on this power wagon. Yeah, the battery is right there. At at the front windshield right here. So we're gonna have to definitely figure out how we wanna mount this. I think I might end up just mounting this guy here on the servo, and then we can mount this guy in here, like so. Pretty simple, or even like this. Let's see, the battery's gonna come out here. Let's get our battery plug plugged in. We're gonna, we don't really need access to the switch because we'll you probably just always leave the switch on. I guess we'll just run it like this. And then our motor, let's see, plug that guy in, make sure we're all clear. Yeah, we'll just mount this ESC like this on the front. And I think we're gonna mount our receiver like so. And it'll face up into the cab, but we should be fine. So let me get that taped in and then we'll plug it all in. Ta-da! We're all wired up. We've got our servo wire plugged in our ESC plugged in, our shift servo plugged in. We're sitting it sideways because it's a little lower profile than if we were to stand it up. And then you see less of the wires through the cab. So we can throw the cab on here. Bam. You can see the ESC just a little bit. If we really wanted to get crazy with it, you know, we'd decase the ESC, decase the receiver, maybe not the ESC. ESC is probably fine, but maybe decase this move it, figure out a different way to put the battery. We can get real creative with it. Um, if you're running like the uh, Max Smasher or the K5, you could have side skirts and then you can mount all your electronics and batteries on your side skirts, which gets your COG lower. You could do it here, but you'd have to cut out the existing skirt or mount it to the chassis in some way. Um, not really ideal. This power wagon body is kind of, kind of a pain sometimes, but uh, it looks good. We're actually working on this guy here for this little chop top version with doors. Yeah, buddy, way more aggressive. It's been a lot of work. When we have time, we work on that, but we don't have a lot of time, so it doesn't get a lot of work. Anyway, guys, here we go. Let's go ahead and plug in the battery here. Let me get the transmitter. I believe it's this guy. Turn it on. Actually, so we're gonna go ahead and bind it, first things first. So to bind it, all you do is you hold the bind button, turn it on, should be blinking here, and then we'll turn this on. And it should bind. 
It's not going to look like anything happens, but if you reset your transmitter, ta-da! Ooh, buddy! Oh man, that's going to be awesome. It's our neutral. I think we're going backwards. So what we need to do is reverse our throttle. Bam! Oh, that slow crawl. These motors are so good. This motor ESC combo is just kind of tried and true and proven, and we run them in so many trucks. I mean, here, we can put it in second gear. That's second gear, and look, you still get ridiculous slow crawl in second gear. And look at that. You don't have to give it more throttle. You just hold it where it's at, and it'll, it'll go. Bam. Sorry, I bumped it there freaking nuts guys you may have to mess with your drag brake and whatnot um because these ring and pinion versus worm gear definitely uh will need a little bit of drag brake adjustment you can do all that on the app all right we got our bluetooth on our app our fura car app everything's on the first thing you should always do when you get a new esc a new remote is configure it and update as well update the firmware so make sure you're at the most recent firmware right now we're at uh, 2.17 the newest is 2.19 there's all the different firmware updates we'll go ahead and do that real quick doesn't take long at all ta-da simple as that should be all updated Let's check here. Boom. Connect. 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 There we go. Check update firmware again. Hmm. Usually it shows the... Uh... Here, let's try resetting. Oh, there we go. There we go. Update firmware. Now we're on 2.19. If you ever have issues updating or anything like that, you can always just reset your ESC, completely close out of the app, go back in, finish the update, or redo the update. Um, like if your phone disconnects or something weird, your battery dies, stuff like that can happen. And uh, that's the best way to fix that. So you can go ahead and go through here and set all of your different settings. Crawler versus monster truck, that'll change what options you have for the ESC. Same with brush versus brushless. And then your different motors here. We're using the Micro Komodo. And uh, yeah, should be good. The next thing you're going to want to do is go into throttle. And you're going to want to set your endpoints for your throttle. You can see we're at negative seven right now. Not necessarily ideal. So we'll go ahead and hit calibrate. It's going to say, do you want to start? We'll say yes. And actually, when I do this, I usually like to flip the truck over just in case something goes wrong. It doesn't go shooting off the bench. So it's saying center zero speed, zero. Say OK. Then it's going to ask for full throttle. Another thing I wanted to mention is always update your app. Make sure your app is completely updated, especially if you're finding weird stuff. Always update the app. And then we can go ahead and calibrate. Zero. It's going to ask for max speed. Ooh, you know what? We're actually set. That's interesting. It's because we flipped it on our throttle here. So we'll go ahead and, there we go, max speed, okay. Max brake, okay. And now we should be good, we'll say yes. Okay, now we're much closer to that one and zero. If you wanna redo it, we can redo it. Let's try one more time. Set zero, make sure your transmitter is set to its neutral position then our max speed, and then our max reverse or max brake. So this is why it's really important to set that. These remotes apparently have a little bit of a drift in them. You can see that. That's why we set that. So let's try one more time. And this has nothing to do with the ESC or the app. This strictly has to do with these transmitters and the quality of the transmitter.
All right, well, that looks like it's about the best we're going to get. That also has to do with this neutral forward. This is kind of your dead zone. So if you go narrow, it's going to be a, a more sensitive right where you start, right? And if you go wide, then it doesn't actually start giving power until you're much further. So then we can go through and make sure we put our low voltage cutoff. I don't know why these don't come from the factory at at least like 3.2 or 3.0 at least. We usually like to do 3.2 or 3.3. Um, now that we know we're safe and we're not going to just fly off the table, let's make sure our direction is correct, which it's not going to be right. So we'll flip it here. It's better to flip it in the ESC than on the remote. That way the ESC knows which direction is actual forward. Nice. And give ourselves some drag break here so that it doesn't just go. If you turn your drag brake down, then when you're up on a hill, you'll be able to just push it. See? See that? Well, it's, it's got some pretty good gear reduction in these motors. But we'll go ahead and like set it to like 50% for now. And as we're driving it, we can adjust that. But man, I just love that. Right? That truck is moving right now. Doesn't look like it. But it is. How freaking crazy, right? Like, ugh, so good. So good. This is why you need to upgrade to brushless, guys. And in a two-speed, oh, man. I mean, that's fast. That's that's fast. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Anyway, you can mess with the app. So if you haven't messed with the app before, you get all your telemetry and all your running information, max, forward, reverse, brake, all that good stuff. Uh, your drive mode, if you wanted to do like for race cars or for monster trucks. Monster trucks usually do forward, reverse with brake and crawlers usually do forward, reverse. Um, yeah, pretty slick. Uh, we don't want that. We want that normal for now. You can adjust your punch, low speed, FOC, all that cool stuff. Anyway, guys, I have a video on this right over here. Dives a lot deeper, and uh, you should definitely check that out. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, I guess, get a body on it, and we'll go drive it. This is freaking awesome. I am super stoked. Stoked. Did I just date myself? I'm old because I said stoked. Probably. Totally awesome and rad and bodacious. Totally tubular. I'm not from California, so I'm a Coloradan. All righty. Super excited, guys. Oh, wait, we're in two speed. There we go. Sick. All right. So I mentioned at the very beginning that we would show uh, more on the binding to the V2 XCX24 axial remote. Let me show you what happens. We'll go ahead and hold the bind button, turn it on. We're in bind mode. Go ahead and bind this guy up. Okay, it's not going to do anything just like before. You got to reset it. And now you reset. And now we're bound. Problem is, oh, now we're getting no throttle. Hmm. Before we were at least getting some throttle. I don't know what's going on there. Hold on. Oh, I don't like that. Uno momento. Got it back bound to the uh, stock remote. Very odd. Let's try again. Interesting. So earlier it was working on the motor and now it just seems like it does not want to. There we go. See, I don't know. It's acting weird. That's for sure. But you can see it's just twitching out. So clearly the V2 doesn't really work, um, but that's not what it was designed for. I just wanted to show this in case people were interested. I mean, it'll work, but there's some glitchiness for sure. And it's coming from the remote, right? It's not the not the ESC. It's not the receiver. It's straight up the remote. As soon as you turn on the remote, it starts freaking out. Anyway. And again, one more time before we go out. I think it looks pretty good. You can barely see it in there. 
pretty slick. Ooh, buddy. Do we have some ballooning? No. Definitely going to be a fun one now. We're going to rev. Vroom, 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 vroom. Sounds like a turbo. Freaking sweet. <laughs> All right, sorry, let's go. Right, guys well i hope you enjoyed that video and saw how awesome this system is it's so easy to just drop in the fact that you can use all the different stock remotes that come with pretty sweet um and you saw it just dropped straight in super simple we had a blast with it we're gonna keep having a blast with it we gotta we gotta fix our front portal here we stripped out our uh stock portal gears these are the plastic ones because this is the first very first iteration uh the newer the newer ones come with metal gears so we've got a set of metal gears that we got sent out when they first sent these out um and then they found out that the portal gears were a little 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 weak they sent out metal ones to anybody that uh requested them so we've got ours we'll throw them in there and yeah other than that system is awesome like i said easy to install drops right in and i love that i get to use my stock remote i mean you can't ask for any more from a uh a just drop-in system on a ready-to-run 
box stock truck, you know. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. All right, guys, I hope you uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and then don't forget to share the video with anybody that might be interested in uh, the system or just needs to see something super cool. And uh, yeah, get out there, build something awesome, build a truck, build a car, build a course, build a community, and then smash it, crash it, and bash it, but don't break the expensive parts. Mm -hmm.